weapons and dumb thugs. How easy does it get? Static Shock, the origin of a teen superhero. Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Terry Cooper and this is Marvelous Videos. In 1993, African American writers and artists founded Milestone Comics to create stories and comics about African American superheroes. These comics were published and distributed by the comic giant DC. Their superhero Static soon became the face of the company as their flagship superhero. Well then, how about a sidekick? This super cool teen hero with electromagnetic powers was created by the founders of Milestone Comics themselves, namely Dennis Cowan, Michael Davis, Dwayne McDuffie, and Derek T. Dingle. Have a seat, Static. Thanks. I'd rather stay. Static is born as a regular guy who goes on to gain superpowers at 14 years of age. He's quite similar to Spider-Man in several ways. If I were you, I'd charge him with attempted robbery. But then again, they've already been charged pretty His popularity catapults to surreal heights as the character succeeds at resonating with the people and bringing more diversity to the comic sphere. Due to this, DC decided to keep Static's story going even after Milestone Comics had shut down. As a part of DC, Static went on to appear in groups such as the Teen Titans and Young Justice. As a character that has appeared in several series and media, Static has often gotten different backstories and origins. In this video, we'll go over it all and even talk about the new Static content that might grace the fans soon enough. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Now, let's begin. After all this time, you'd think I'd be tired of cleaning up after you guys. No way! Static Shock Origin Static, aka Virgil Hawkins, is the titular character of the American superhero cartoon series called Static Shock. The premiere episode which aired on September the 3rd, 2000, set up the origin story for the character and showed us how a 14-year-old Virgil turned into a metahuman. Do your folks know where you are, young man? Is that another siren? Duty calls, sir. Virgil is a young high schooler from Dakota City who lives with his sister Sharon and his father Robert. His mother had passed away as a result of a gang shooting. Because of this, his father was very adamant about Virgil never becoming a part of a gang. His life is quite normal as we find him anticipating his school's homecoming. He also wants to ask his friend slash crush Frida out for the event and is pumped to tell his family about it. Big B, I'm taking my friendship with Frida to another level. Gonna ask her to homecoming. What'd she ever do? Virgil goes to school and chats with Frida and his friend Richie, but just when he tries to ask her about attending homecoming with him, one of the school bullies with severely low-waisted jeans appears to ask Frida out instead. His name is Francis F. Stop Stone, and he is downright terrible at asking a girl out. Virgil tries to point that out, but it brings him right under Francis's fire. He pins Virgil to the locker and is about to land a straight punch to his face when the leader of a school gang, Wade, appears to defend Virgil. Francis gets driven away and Virgil is saved. I'm picking up where I left off. Jump. Later that day, Francis gets a hold of Virgil in a nearby alley and beats him to a pulp. However, as Wade is reported to be in the vicinity once again with some of his gang members, Francis and his boys escape. Seeing the sorry state Virgil was in, Wade later offers him to join his gang for his own protection. Virgil reluctantly teams up with them, and that night, Wade calls him to meet the gang at the dock. Virgil meets with Wade and company and is handed a gun as the gang intends to take on Francis and his gang in a restricted area. And of course, Virgil is given the gun to take Francis out. He soon understands how severe this business is, especially with his mother dying as a result of a gang shooting, and throws the gun into the water, but soon the anticipated fight between the two gangs breaks out. Virgil once again finds himself facing Francis when police helicopters surround them to break up the fight. The people begin to scream when they are hit with some sort of a purple tear gas laced with a strange chemical, later revealed to be the quantum vapor or quantum juice in the comics, which causes a severely strange physical reaction in everyone. One person's eyes begin to glow while another's body stretches. However, Virgil climbs over a fence and escapes. When Virgil wakes up the next day, he finds his blanket clinging to his body as if its life was dependent on him, and it's not a normal static electricity at all. The lights automatically turn on when Virgil enters the bathroom, and his electric trimmer begins to work by itself when Virgil holds it up, despite being unplugged. 
He realizes he's become an electrical conduit and tells his best friend Richie about it. Whoa! Tell me that's not cool. How the heck did you... There was an explosion. Richie is impressed seeing Virgil's new powers, which he has somehow learned to use within an hour or two and can fly on manhole covers and throw metallic objects around. He suggests Virgil has become a superhero, and that is exactly how Static Shock is born. He soon begins work as a superhero and even helps around the school with their homecoming preps using his superhero alter ego. Meanwhile, gang members from the fight at the docks have been hospitalized following their exposure to the mysterious purple gas. While most of them struggle to even hold themselves together while their bodies melt off, Francis realizes that he has pyrokinetic powers now and can generate blasts of fire. He uses these new powers to blast out of the window and of course sets off to be a new meta villain. Virgil, Richie and Frida spend time at a music store when they find someone who begins to act quite suspiciously. The guy soon mutates into a monstrous purple creature and begins to cause havoc. As Virgil follows him, Francis appears. He scares the mutant away with his fire powers and then proceeds to harass Frida to go out with him once again. Virgil soon changes into his superhero costume and takes on Francis who is now going by the name of Hot Streak. With superpowers, Virgil thinks he's finally on equal grounds with his bully, or so he thinks. He holds up well for a moment in the fight. That is until Francis uses his fire powers to propel himself into the air and fly. He overpowers Static, not because of his superpowers, but because Virgil feels overwhelmed by being face to face with Francis. Just as Francis prepares for his final fiery attack, a bunch of firefighters blast him with their hoses, neutralizing his fire powers. What's his name? Static. He's doing something, isn't he? Didn't you hear what happened today? He got beat. The issue with this mass mutation grows bigger and bigger, and these metahumans are now called Baby Bangs. Afraid that he is now a problem to society, Virgil gets his vitals and blood checked. Meanwhile, his father addresses the city council and the mayor over the situation. However, the mayor seems to brush the topic aside as she only seems interested in talking about the city's budget. Virgil and Richie find the mayor's behavior suspicious and begin to spy on her. That night, she meets up with a rich old man while feeding the ducks. Their conversation confirms Virgil and Richie's suspicions about the mayor's involvement in the purple mutation gas event. The old man, Edwin Alva, was responsible for dealing with the gas formula and his men were involved in this nasty business as well. Static tails him and is caught by his right-hand man, York. He's trapped inside a tube from which his powers bounce right off. The tube also begins to fill with pressure. Static then overloads the space with his powers and the excessive pressure causes the tube to burst. The next day, Hot Streak arrives once again and wreaks havoc around a park. He lights hot dogs on fire and throws them at people. Static intercepts him but can barely keep up with his barrage of fireballs. Ultimately, Static uses all of his powers against Hot Streak and attacks him with metal debris. Hot Streak reads the situation and runs away, prompting Static to follow him into a place surrounded by trees. He does this because he notices how Static requires metal to attack, so a place that is nothing but nature should put him at an overwhelming disadvantage. However, Static takes advantage of the fact that they live in a city and attacks Hot Streak by unearthing underground sewage pipes. Sewage water sprays at the bully and he is finally defeated. Later that day, his doctor informs him about the tests and states that Virgil would benefit from avoiding junk food for a while. Except I don't really want a cure. I like my powers. Another mind-blowing Static origin story from Young Justice. Static gets a new origin story in the animated series Young Justice, which doesn't follow Peter David's Young Justice comic series. This show follows the adventures of young teen superheroes who are members of this group. Static becomes one of them in the Season 2 finale. In the fifth episode of Season 2, Jaime Reyes aka Superhero Blue Beetle's friend Ty goes missing. Meanwhile, the case of the disappearing teens gets investigated and the Alpha Team, which consists of Batgirl, Miss Martian, Wonder Girl and Bumblebee, gets sent to a place called Bialia for their vision. It turns out that the villain with psionic powers, Simon, is active again and is working behind the scenes under Queen Bee to abduct the teens with other bad guys such as Mammoth, Shimmer, Icicle Jr and Devastation. Batgirl gets held captive alongside the other missing teens while investigating the matter, so the rest of the Alpha team soon arrive to rescue her. After the fight has been wrapped up and the heroes think they have saved those who had been trapped, 
Queen Bee is still content as another shipment of teens arrive, and in this shipment, we see a glimpse of Virgil Hawkins. He was abducted while waiting at Dakota City train station while he was on the way to see his sister. In this storyline, his mother Jean Hawkins is revealed to be alive as well. After Queen Bee acquired him as part of the second shipment, he was transported to a far-off base where he became the subject of several dangerous experiments. He was infused with the metagene as Queen Bee's team wanted to verify whether this gene can be triggered or not. Later, the Young Justice team infiltrated the base and freed the teens who had been abducted. However, Virgil soon found out that the experiments conducted on him gave him electromagnetic powers, which in this series are shown to be blue and whitish, instead of the more lilac hue from the Static Shock series. He was soon recruited by the notorious Lex Luthor, who, as usual, double-crosses everyone. He then trains under the hero Black Lightning, hones his skills, adopts Static as his moniker, and becomes part of the Young Justice team. You're that freak! You say freak, I say you need! The name's Static. The electrifying hero just received a new origin in Milestone's exciting new reboot. The comic line that had originally launched Static Shock, Milestone Comics, was dissolved in 1997. However, it was relaunched in 2020. With Static Shock being their flagship character, he is also set to receive a fresh new origin story. In this new revamped Milestones line, which is also called the Milestone Returns Zero collection, exemplary artists such as Scott Hanna, who previously worked on the Amazing Spider-Man comics, Reginald Hudlin, who was involved in writing Black Panther, and Koi Pham from X-Men will collaborate for the new origin story on Static. Oh man, my gear smells like Chinese takeout. Hey, Electric Boy! A huge reason why Virgil Hawkins garnered a loyal following was his nature as a relatable nerdy teen, he had a crush, he had a bully, he wasn't a threat, and he was also one of the earlier African-American characters to become a superhero. All of those factors will be retained, however, the premise is set to change a bit. Static Shock has often tackled some social issues. As a result of this, Virgil will be seen attending the Black Lives Matter rally as he genuinely believes in the movement. Also, he wants to see his crush, who is attending the rally as well. Despite the activism, he is still just a teenager. In 2020, actor Michael B. Jordan announced that he plans to produce a Static Shock film under Warner Brothers. The movie will follow the Black Lives Matter storyline as well, where the tear gas used on the protesters will replace the tear gas that caused the Big Bang and the other baby bangs. Sorry, Blobby. No shell food for you. What makes Static Shock so powerful? The tear gas quantum vapor definitely powered up a scrawny nerdy kid to a huge extent. With electromagnetism under his belt, Virgil, or Static, excels at controlling and manipulating electromagnetism. He can create an electromagnetic aura, amplify it and attack using it. He can also use it to draw metallic objects towards himself, or to direct the objects towards others. He can create force fields and even levitate himself, often using a metallic flat plate to stand on. He can even use static cling to cling to stuff, to make stuff cling to him, and to make others cling to stuff. Kind of like Spider-Man with his webbing. Tell you something about electricity. A big enough charge can overload any insulator. He can also manipulate technology. He doesn't need electrical circuits or plug devices to use technology. Just holding them is enough. He can also create an electromagnetic pulse, punch by creating tasers, and manipulate radio waves to overhear conversations from afar. Virgil, or Static, is also immune to being electrocuted or mind-controlled. He can even energize the power ring of a Green Lantern, despite not being a power battery. He also uses a special tracking device and tiny grenades. The manhole covers that he used to levitate himself later get replaced by a proper Static Saucer. We've mentioned about Static immediately knowing how to use his powers before, but here's the thing. He's a nerd. He's the smart science guy who knows a lot about these things. Once again, he is kind of like Spider-Man in this regard, and his understanding of these scientific concepts such as electromagnetism makes his abilities more formidable because he knows exactly what to do. Maybe we should put you on payroll, Static. Give me one of those shiny helmets and we'll call it even. You heard me, eat bun. What's up with the upcoming Static Shock movie? A Static Shock movie is on its way. It's going to be a collaboration between Warner Brothers, DC Films and Milestone Media. Michael B. Jordan is on board as one of the co-producers of this movie. As the comics are slightly darker and cover more social aspects, the movie is more likely to rely on it as the source material instead of the more light-hearted animated series. 
As it is, these movies generally tend to be more PG and PG-13, unlike cartoons that cater to a general audience. Michael B. Jordan, who previously appeared in Fantastic Four and Black Panther, has claimed that he intends to kick off a new universe that highlights black superheroes. This hints that the Static Shock continuity might not follow the DC Extended Universe continuity at all, and instead give rise to a new continuity. However, details about crew members such as the director, writer or cast have not yet been revealed. Previously, sources believed that Jaden Smith was being eyed for the role of Static. However, there is no definite proof of that at the moment. If we're lucky enough, Michael B. Jordan might have a role in the film himself. Good triumphs over evil because evil has rubber bands. For Where else has Static Shock appeared? Apart from appearing in the animated series and, of course, the comics, Static has been present in films as well. He had a non speaking cameo in Justice League War. This Static mirrored the Young Justice version. Currently, two Static films are allegedly being developed one of them is the live action Michael B. Jordan production, and the other one, an animated film. It's great that an animated Static Shock film is also being conceived, since nowadays a lot more mainstream superhero media content often focuses on live action. But sometimes it's cool for things not to be too mainstream. The diehard fans can enjoy the more niche content about their favourite comic book characters that way. That's all for now. If you like our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. Well, time to head home. Amen. But... The subway's out, okay?